Madison, it's nice to see you. I'm glad you could make it. Future me here because I did not enter this video because obviously, literally, why would I? No. But you'll see in a second how this video starts. It was kind of on a whim. Regardless, if you saw my video from last week, then you would know that I have a serious problem with starting series and then just not finishing them. And it is my goal in 2024 to try and wrap up everything that I've started because what is the point of starting a series with no intention of getting all of the answers and not finishing them all? There's no point. I agree with you. It's like a real problem that I have starting series and then starting other series and then even more it's a serious problem i have 17 series that i am in the middle of which is an embarrassing thing to say we are going to try and get through some of my most anticipated today and hopefully check some series off of my to-do list because 17 is embarrassing today is december 26 which is ruthless vows days and my pre-order got canceled or like not canceled but it's not going to be here until the 28th or 29th and that just cannot and will not do so i will be heading out on boxing day right now to run to the closest bookstore to get it because there's no world that i cannot have it in my hands as of today i just my most anticipated release of the year without a shadow of a doubt i need it i'm also very much so in the middle of filming trying to finish my top fantasy reads of 2023 and i'm reading powerless by lauren roberts but i'm only 30 pages in so like i'm not that invested and like i think i just need to read this today i'm usually good at waiting when stuff comes out like it's not the end of the world if i don't read it the day it comes out i don't think i'm gonna be okay with this one i think that i need to sit down and read this entire book today this lives rent free and i will not have it be spoiled on tiktok so i feel like it's like the smarter decision to buy it right now and read it right now right like pause everything in my life to my mom and I did some real hard thinking myself and as much as I hate taking breaks in between filming videos like I'm not gonna think about anything except for this until I read it so we are gonna sit down we are gonna read this today and then it's gonna be in the middle of my previous video that I just posted on my page so if you want to go watch that you can watch that too there's just no world that I can't get into this I need to know what happens and I literally like I read the first sentence of the blurb and it's like two weeks have passed since I was returned home and like I can't I can't not read it so we're starting ruthless vows right now today December 26th I can't I I cannot. Are you kidding me? Like I had tears in my eyes when I saw this at the bookstore. Like I, it's just time. <laughs> talk to you guys and truly the only reason is because i got 10 pages into this and was already crying and i just don't want to leave this world like i've read it so slowly over the last couple of days because i don't want it to be over it's also been like the holidays and my birthday i turned 25 I don't want to talk about it. Today is actually December 31st, so I feel like it would be a good time to just like finish the book, go into the new year. There's nothing on my plate. I'm like a little bit over halfway now. I don't even know if you can tell how much I have annotated this book. Like I am, like I, it's better than I remember. Like Iris and Roman are better than I remember. You guys have heard me recommend Divine Rivals 101 times on TikTok, but like truly one of my favorite reads without a doubt of the entire year. Since picking this up, I've been asked so many times for like, what's like a fun little light fantasy that I could get into? And I've recommended this duet so many times. There's quite literally not a single thing that I can tell you about this without spoiling Divine Rivals. This one picks up like literally right where the first one leaves off. The entire world is so well put together and 
so well built out like it's such an interesting world and like magic system isn't the right word it's not like a big magic system i guess it's kind of like a magic political system regardless it's so equally world and plot driven and character driven like roman and iris and like the side characters have like such well-defined characters and characteristics and like things you expect from them and just every single person line thing that is in this book is so beautiful and adds so much to the story like even the side characters and like small things that happen like there's a part in this book where one of the side characters gives her like a little book about birds and the amount of times that it has circled back to that to be like a lesson or like something that a side character is teaching iris i honestly just don't know how she's built this world out so well and like so concretely in these characters in only a duet i cared so much in the first one but it was so long ago now that like i forgot a little bit i just need to know how iris and roman's story ends i've seen nothing but people sobbing on tiktok in the last couple of days to this so i know it's going to absolutely shatter my heart because if i am so fucking for real with you guys i'm like 250 pages in and i have cried like at least three or four times and not like a tear here or there like i have cried it's just like so romantic and beautiful and lovely on such a dark scary backdrop and the dichotomy of those two things makes the love and the hope and everything in this like so much more impactful so it is how i plan on spending my new year's eve which I could not ask for a better way to end the year. I could not ask for a better book to end the year. So thank you, Rebecca Ross. I just, I need to know what happens. I just, I need to know. I'm like already so prepared for this to destroy me. entered the chat she dominated and then she walked out i'm so glad that i read this the second that it came out i'm so glad that i put off everything that i was doing to read this i could not think of a better way to end the year than like being encapsulated in this world rebecca ross you're writing it's magic it's truly it's magic and i care for iris and roman like they are real human beings in my life they're real characters in my story that is my life i think about them did i love this as much as divine rivals no Divine Rivals was like six, seven star territory, like favorite reads of all time, recommend all the time. I still recommend this through my heart, through and through. This is like a true five star read. No flaws. I just felt like even more for them in Divine Rivals, but I felt so much for them in this. I think the duet is great. I would not say this is worse than Divine Rivals. I just would say that Divine Rivals exceeds a hundred. Like that bell curve caught her and she's finishing the class like 110%. That is what Divine Rivals gives me. This gives me like straight A student, 100% across the board. I don't I don't know where that student analogy came from. You get it though. I really like how she flipped the script in this one. We got to see Roman being the little secretive one in the first one. And then we get to kind of see Iris having the feelings that Roman had talking to her, not knowing. I love, I loved with every fiber of my being this duet. I will reread one day and I will be giving these to my children one day. The romance in this series is truly unmatched. It's unmatched. This was definitely my most anticipated next book coming out in the series I have unfinished. And I am so glad to be putting this duet on my shelf. Done, amazing. I will recommend this to the day I die. She does romance and light fantasy so well. The pacing, the world building, the character development, the romance development, everything is so well-timed and so well-paced and so easy to understand. I know you've heard a lot of people describe Divine Rivals, the duet as fantasy for romance lovers. And I still think it stands. That being said, there is one other book on my TBR that has been there forever. And this trilogy has been calling my name to be finished for so long. I don't know why I'm keeping you in suspense. I'm going to keep it up. I read the first trilogy by this author after reading the first two in the trilogy that's unfinished that I still have to read, okay? I read the third in that trilogy the day the third in the second trilogy. This is getting really confusing. Once Upon a Broken Heart, Curse for True Love. I don't have the dust jacket on right now. Curse for True Love. I read Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Bell of Never After before I read 
Caraval. I regret it now because I loved Caraval and now reading this after reading Caraval, I'm like, this would have hit even harder for me if I read Caraval first. This World after Caraval would have been great. I feel a lot for Jax going into this, knowing everything that happened. You know, you know, if you've read them. I put off reading this for so long, A, because I couldn't read it when it first came out because I had not finished Finale in the Caraval series and it felt wrong to leave that unfinished and finish this, which I'm glad I did. Look, going into this, I already feel so much more after finishing Caraval. Two, not, not amazing reviews. Truly not amazing reviews. It's been kind of 50-50. I've seen a lot of people still love and recommend the trilogy as a whole five-star trilogy, but I have not seen many people say they weren't disappointed by this. I started it this morning. I am like 30 or so pages in, 55. The font on these books is huge. It's so easy to fly through them. I think I read for 30 minutes. So far, I'm liking it. I love Stephanie Garber's writing. I love her world. And it is such a good way to break up other fantasy reads. Like this gives me romance vibes because it's fairy tale esque Like it's giving whimsical fun. It's not giving like high stakes, which I like without spoiling anything. I know a lot of people were disappointed to not see a lot of Jacks in this, which I'm 50 pages in. I haven't seen him yet. Um, why am I kind of rooting for the print? The second I got his POV, I was like, maybe he's a changed man. I don't remember how much I wanted Jax and Evangeline to be together. Writing, loving it. Story, loving it. I love the whimsical. It's giving Snow White bites the apple and falls asleep. Isn't that Sleeping Beauty? Regardless, it gives me adult fairy tale vibes. I'm eating it up. That being said, I have very low expectations. So it's either going to be just better than those expectations and I'll be happy. It's going to meet the expectations and I'm going to be like, or it's gonna like, I had such low expectations. It was great compared to what I thought. We're going into A Curse for True Love. This is the one that like really just needs to be checked off my list. If we're honest, I should never have left this trilogy unread for so long because I've had this since the day it came out and I'm just not reading it. what it is about this but every single time that i'm in one of evangeline or apollo's chapters like i'm rooting for them like i feel for them like why do i feel like we're getting an apollo redemption arc but then every single time that we get jacks i'm like no, I want that. I don't know how I feel about it. There's a lot going on, but simultaneously nothing. It's going really fast, which these books always do. The font is like times 100. I'm conflicted. Well, I definitely don't feel the same as I did reading Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After. Like I'm understanding where the disappointment is gonna start to come in. Especially if we don't get a lot more of you know who. That being said, after having finished all of Caraval and this being like the sixth book in this world, like all interconnected, part one, I forget a lot. I've had to do some Googling. I just feel like I'm so in on the joke. Like I feel like so encapsulated in this world. There's so much that's happened leading up to this. I still think they're two five-star trilogies. I'm obviously not even halfway, almost halfway into this. So I don't know where this is gonna sit. I would anticipate it's gonna be a four. Like I'm enjoying it. I'm not loving it, you know? But I still think it's gonna be a five-star trilogy. That's my thoughts so far. It's still the whimsical fairy tale, magical realness that we get with Stephanie Garber. I just don't know if it's going where I wanted it to go. But we'll see. I don't know what I want. I just told you that, so we'll see.
didn't y'all tell me I was gonna fucking hate this? I was so convinced. I was so convinced that I was gonna be like, this is bad. And I feel like you can tell throughout the clips that I filmed while reading this that I was like, I don't know when this is gonna get bad. Like, I know that this is gonna get bad. I loved it. I don't totally know where I'm gonna leave my rating now. I feel like it's honestly like, I'm thinking about it a lot. Like, it's definitely a 4.5, maybe a 4.75. Dare, I say a five star read. After the five books that lead up to this, like this being the sixth book in this story in this world, like they're so interconnected. I had so many answers throughout this and I also was expecting it not to end the way that it did based on how upset people were. Why? I loved this, I think. I really liked this. The writing was just as magical and whimsical as like I'm used to with Stephanie Garber's world. I feel like I wanted Evangeline's story to go like that. And I like like that she had me all fucked up in the head and that I was rooting for the wrong person. And that's not even up for debate, the wrong person. Like there was a redemption arc for someone who I didn't think needed a redemption arc, but then like true colors come out. Like I, I'm confused why we all hated this. What did I miss in this? I thought it was a great conclusion to the six. And even just the little, little, things that we find out that tie in and make finale from Caraval make sense. I thought this was a great end and it was such a quick fucking read. It was so easy, but the story was cute. It was whimsical. It was fun. I ate this up. I'm confused why we didn't all eat this up. Am I stupid? Did I miss something? Like this was a great conclusion to both trilogies, in my opinion. Also her ending it with we're not leaving the Magnificent North yet. I need the next trilogy, Miss Stephanie Garber. I need one. I also, Chaos. I would love a Chaos spinoff. Just, just putting it out there into the world. I would love a Chaos spinoff after this. That being said, Said. A little book came out two days ago, showed up my door two days ago. I'm scared. I don't totally know how prepared I feel to go into this. However, I must. I think I said it in my Olivia Blake video after reading The Atlas Six and The Atlas Paradox that I was scared for when this came out about how much I would not remember. The whole Atlas Six series, everything Olivia Blake related is so intricate for lack of a better word. Like these stories are so intricate and I've been seeing a lot about this in the last couple of months online because it was coming out in January and I just like have this newfound appreciation for Atlas Six and Atlas Paradox and the story that she created and like everything that it has to do with. I am scared to go into this. I'm scared I'm not gonna remember a lot. I'm scared I'm not gonna remember enough to like really get Olivia Blake out of this, but I've missed the feeling that I had while reading these books. Looking back, reading The Atlas Six and reading The Atlas Paradox altered my brain chemistry. Like that week of reading Olivia Blake, it's on my channel if you guys want to watch it because I think you can tell in that video that those books altered my brain chemistry. This is like one of the most complex, most amazing series that I've ever read. It feels really, really, really intricate and high stakes and pretentious and important for lack of a better word. I'm scared that I'm not gonna remember enough. I'm really scared that like they need to all be read in succession. Just like for someone who has a brain that's so scattered like mine. I said it back then that I was worried about it. I think I'm gonna like watch some what to know going into Atlas Complex, like what to re-remember videos on TikTok and then go from there because I just, I don't think I can put this off any longer. The fun here is negative 72 and it took me a while to get through the atlas six and to get through the atlas paradox so i think i'm just gonna mood read this throughout they're really captivating stories and i did end up reading those pretty fast but i've been reading a lot in the last few weeks and i'm just like i don't want to force myself to read too much so i don't know how long this is gonna take me also like i can tell you literally nothing about anything the most i can tell you is that the atlas six if you haven't heard me or rant and rave about it enough on tiktok is about six elite medines they're witches but i don't know if i'm saying that word right that's how i say in my head. Is that right? They're really powerful witches and six are chosen every 10 years to try and make it into five spots in the Alexandrian society, which is this secret society that is a library that has harbored all of the knowledge in the world. And it's a library that everybody thought had been burned down. And now they like kind of control the world. Like they're the strongest, most powerful people. You get like all six of the competing witches perspectives. Interpersonal relationships in this are top tier. Each book I found out recently deals with the house of thought and this one actually deals with philosophy. Like it's like that's the focus of it. Olivia Blake was answering questions in an Instagram story slide and somebody was like well this book sent me to therapy and she was like that's actually so funny you say that because I wrote them with the intention they each have like a house of thought that they would like try and make you connect them to your real life and try and make you connect higher philosophical and theoretical theories to your own life. So like if you have a lot of questions and you go into therapy thinking about yourself after, that's actually what I was going for. She's just like, she's a mastermind. I don't know how her brain creates what they create. I'm rambling because I'm scared to go into this. I miss how I felt reading this. I will be sad to leave these characters behind because I feel there's so much world building, so much like character development. The story is so intricate and so interesting. And like, she keeps you on the edge of your seat while also making mundane amazing. Like you don't even notice you're reading mundane things until something crazy happens. And you're like, oh my God, you were really, you were trying to divert my attention there for a while, weren't you? This is my initial 
initial thoughts going in that now that all three are out if you think that you would like a really intricate kind of intense fantasy like this I feel like I don't even know how to describe who would like this book then now that all three are out I would recommend reading them all in succession because reading Alice 6 and Alice Paradox right away Alice 6 was good Alice Paradox was amazing it felt like I was so in on the joke I hope I just don't forget the joke in this one I'm rambling because I'm scared okay re-listening to all of this like I don't know how, how she does it she's a mastermind I feel like I agree all of these easter eggs mean something all these little comments mean something a big part of me wants to not even annotate this the first time around and just read it and then maybe do a reread at some point I hate not annotating it feels like so unproductive for me for some reason in my little fucked up brain but a big part of me wants to not I love putting question marks aside things like I think this matters I kind of want to just go in and just straight read this and like absorb it but annotating it I absorb bit more but it takes longer i feel like i just need to read it the first time okay seriously huge shout out to lauren's little library there is literally no way that i could have gone into this read without having watched all of her wrap-up videos wrapping up all the questions all the easter eggs i 100 agree she's a mastermind these are all gonna mean something feel a little bit more prepared they take a lot of brain power to read and understand but like everything means something everything always ties together in the end like a bow she will forever be an autobi author like i respect her ability to write stories and craft these characters and relationships to no end i think i just will have to do a reread of everything and i know that i'll see so many things the second time around that i kind of think i'm just not gonna annotate this time around don't remember if she did this in Atlas Paradox. She probably did because it's all of Blake. It's right there. I could check. I'm not going to. She did like a little recap of all the characters in the beginning. Like what the library would have on the six. Like what's to be known about them thus far. And it immediately reminded me of so many things. Like I feel like it was in two pages such a great refresher of the plot and like how it ended. Like so many things that were so important that I honestly going in did not remember. So Praise Olivia Blake for that. I do feel like I might be prepared going in. I think this is a series that I'm gonna have to reread 85 times in my lifetime, like once a year, even though it will take me weeks every single time. They're so complex and beautiful and long. Emphasis on the long, but we love it. We love it. <laughs> Okay, remember that author that I read, all of Olive Blake, read like two of her books and they fucked me up for like a really long time. Like I sobbed for like days and they put me in an existential crisis. This is the preamble to like the whole book. This sums up how Olive Blake makes me spiral into existentialism. One side of the coin is a story you've heard before. Genocide, slavery, colonialism, war, inequality, poverty, despotism, murder, adultery, theft, nasty, brutish, short. Left to their own devices, humans will inevitably resort to baser impulses, to self-eradicating violence. Within every human being is the power to see the world as it is and still be driven to destroy it. On the other side of the coin, 10,000 years ago, when the rest of the, his kind survived only on their prowess as hunters, a male with a severe kind of dwarfism was cared for from infancy to adulthood with any quote unquote conceivable benefit to the rest of his kind. Despite the threat of communal scarcity, he was provided an innate form of dignity. He was allowed to live because he was theirs, because he was alive. Left to their own devices, humans will inevitably care for one another as great detriment to themselves. Within every human being is the power to see the world as it is and still be compelled to save it. It is not one side or the other. Both are true. Flip the coin and see where it lands. This is gonna fuck me up. Like it's gonna fuck me up. since I last talked to you guys.
update is I'm about like 45% of the way in and I told myself and I told you that I was planning on reading this like kind of like a when I can kind of vibe like not forcing myself to go through it I had a ton of work stuff and like life stuff too in the last couple of days and I've just been like picking this up when I can and when I want to and I feel exactly how I've always felt reading all of these books like I'm a little bit lost which like is part of the fun. I have a lot of thoughts and simultaneously none. I feel like, can you feel it? Hear my ice maker making ice right now. If you didn't know, I'm addicted to ice. The best sound, literally the best sound. Anyways, I feel how I like always feel reading all of you Blake books, which is a little bit of like, I have no idea what's going on, but like I'm enjoying the ride. You know what I mean? I can't really tell you a ton about this. And I don't even know if I intro what the series is about. So editing Maddie in the future, if I did it before, I'm just talking to the air for no reason. I will say if you have read this or if you've read Atlas, literally just this, it's the inciting force of this one um why do they all want to do it like it sounds like a bad idea out of context that makes no sense i don't really get the motivations totally in this one but i never do with all of you and then i come to the end and i'm like thank you for that ride so i did end up buying it on my kindle as well and i've been reading it why is there so much fur on everything on my kindle and this is my first time reading on kindle ever and i'm obsessed like the fact that i just like so i'm reading it a lot freaking faster now and i just like i'm taking this with me and whenever i have a moment picking it up and reading it and the story is really good it's doing what i wanted to do my initial thoughts i'm just like the thoughts that i have written down because i do that a lot when i'm reading and i'm like that is a thought that i want to share because that's I was gonna say important, but I can't imagine any thoughts that I have that I need to share with you are really classified as important, but are like worth saying. I feel like all of you Blake's books and her characters are so good because it's not like there's a defined villain and a defined hero. And she talks about the fact that there is not definable heroes and villains, which I appreciate that she does. Like every single character, whether you love or hate them, love or hate their motivations, love or hate what they do, you get stories about them and backstories and stuff. And they all do equally redeemable and condemnable things that just like kind of encompasses the human experience. Like I find myself connecting it to like really random stories or like things in my past like things that have happened with someone that like for me was a final straw but like that person's not the villain in the story or like just anything like any book any movie like there's so much nuance to her characters like they have such well-developed personalities and she tells you in such a poetic beautiful way that like probably has so much more meaning than my teeny tiny little brain can genuinely comprehend her writing just feels so important i'm loving it i will say i'm like a little bit lost in the sauce i feel like at this point in a book i'm usually like i'm leaning towards it's going to be this rating if the ending is good or i'm leaning towards this rating if the ending is bad kind of vibe and i have legitimately no idea what i think i'm loving it i'm loving it the story is good if she makes the mundane really interesting and then something crazy will happen and you'll be like oh my god you were diverting my attention from that and this is so much more exciting to read but i enjoyed the mundane part like it feels like a true story but she like almost like you're in the in and outs of their like boring normal conversations but she writes in a way that makes it so impactful and because you're getting the mundane you have such a well-rounded view of these people i think i'm gonna have to do a reread one day to really annotate this i lied i definitely have annotated a couple things and in here as well i haven't tabbed anything just like for time's sake and then i'll go back and look at these and i'll put them in here and then i'll tab everything because it's pretty and that's that's 96 percent of the reason why i annotate because if we're honest i've never gone back and read my annotations i'm rambling i'm rambling so sorry <laughs> I'm currently reading one of Parissa's chapters, which if you've read this series, you know she's like insufferably lovable. Like you hate her, but you love her. And her character arc, her growth and her realizations in this, part one, crazy. Part two, I feel like you can feel that Olive Blake when she's writing these like extremely emotional, tangential, she's sitting at her computer and just like typing, just going. Like I feel like you feel that she is feeling the emotions the characters are feeling. And that's why the thoughts make sense. Like this is what I mean. The characters feel so well-rounded. Makes me think of Alone Within the Ether, where there would be pages on pages on pages of like following brainwaves, which I feel like you're getting a lot in this, but you're understanding their motives and it's like uncovering so much of the story, but they're like real people in my head. Like I feel like I understand how they got where they are. They're dealing with like very normal thought patterns and thought processes, but they're uncovered and they're going through them with such unrealistic, magical, world ending standard. It's art. I don't know how else to say it, it's art. <laughs> This was it, the chronic condition, the only meaning Parissa had in life. It wasn't a secret society, it wasn't an ancient library, it wasn't an experiment that took two decades to design. It was waking up every fucking morning and deciding to keep going. The tiny, unceremonious, incomparable miracle of making it through another goddamn day. The knowledge that life was mean, it was exacting, it was cruel, and it was cursed. It was always ending, but it did not have to be earned.
expected. All of you did destroy me. Um, she picked my heart up out of my chest. My entire thought process, my brain, everything, and threw it on the ground and stomped on it. And I thanked her. But um, we'll recap in the morning. <laughs> I don't know how she does it. I feel like after watching all of that, you have a pretty clear idea of what I'm thinking in regards to the Atlas complex. I have a lot of notes, okay? but clearly simultaneously none. My opinion on all of all of these books are like very similar. Like they give me the same feelings of existentialism and I think her stories are so intricate. Like how many times can I say the same things over and over again? Overall, renowning five-star read, no question about it. My favorite in the series without a doubt. Also like simultaneously, maybe I just was, it probably was because I did not read them back to back and I was a little bit out of the world. This is the one that I was most confused on, but I liked it. Like I feel like some of the ending she didn't just like tell you what happened. It's a little bit up for interpretation, but also she told you without telling you. I'm saying nothing. Like that, I could have just said nothing and it would have had the same effect. The series now being completed, it's like top five series I've ever read. I feel like you guys know me now, especially after watching this. I find meaning in literally everything and I find importance in literally everything. And I feel like just this series carries an importance for me. I stand on, it is a hard read. You really have to pay attention. You have to be ready for it. You have to be like, consumed in the world and really reading it and paying attention like this is not like a fun little rom-com or like a fun little fantasy it like really every single thing that is said in atlas six it mattered all the way up till here but i love the way that her books make me feel i think it's because i like to be hurt while reading i think i just like to feel things when i'm reading and overwhelming existentialism and tears are kind of my strongest feeling i have not left this world i think i will need a good week to recover love you bye